Welcome back guys. In this video, I'll be talking about complex analysis. Now, already we are used to complex numbers. But first of all, let's talk about real analysis. You remember back then when we we're dealing with just real numbers, like single real variables, where y was equal f of x, this was actually a, a very um, easy, um, should I call it transformation, you know? very very easy because we just have a real value a single value but what if we didn't have a complex value let us say w equal f of z now please take note that the same way we have y here we have w when we want to talk about complex analysis then this then become f of z remember when we're doing complex numbers we said z is equal a plus i b but i think in this case since we're dealing with real numbers remember that a and this B here will become real numbers, right? But the thing is, this A will become the real part, then I, B will become the imaginary part. Okay, so let us just say this is better off as X plus I, Y. I think this very guy is much more better. Okay, now, this very complex analysis is a little bit, should I say, it's intriguing actually, because we can actually graph this. This guy is much more easier to graph. We just need our X, and y axis to graph any real um, analysis function or something. But if I want to do this, it is not going to be possible because I'm going to be having four real values. Now, why would I be having four real values or how is that possible? Over here, you've been solving quadratic equations, you've been solving um, simultaneous equations, and all of your values are just one. You have x equal to three. When you draw a table of values, you have maybe x equal to three, y equal to this, s equal to, they have different, different individual values and they are all real values. But when we're talking about complex analysis, imagine this. Imagine if we have a transformation equation um, known as z squared, for example. For example, I think in all textbooks, we love using that very example. So imagine if we have a transformation equation where w is equal f, and sorry, z squared, or f of z equal to z squared. So how do we do this guy okay now look at this so we have our w equal to f of z or which is z squared now what is our z we said we said z should be what x plus i y right so this is squared now you can decide to open this very fast or choosing any other method you like but let us do this the normal way i used to expand my squares i'm going to say s squared so this is s squared then plus i'm going to times everything here so x times iy is ixy, then times 2 is i2xy. Yes, that's correct. Then plus, I will then square this guy. So this iy or squared. So this is a much more faster way of expanding squares. So this is s squared plus i2xy, then plus, can I open this guy? Yes, remember that i squared is what? Minus 1. So this is minus 1 y squared okay i can just um, put that in the bracket so this s squared plus minus is what minus right so i, I just want to bring this guy here so this minus y squared then plus i2 xy now this is our result how does this look like now let me um tell you something if you look at this we still have our real part and our imaginary part in a way right this guy is actually real right everything here is real then everything here is what complex because it's imaginary because of our eye right but it's a problem it's a problem everything here is now real that means i can say that this is you because everything there is real then plus everything here is also um, kind of real because if i have my 2xy that's um v right so i can put my eye here to, do, to denote this very um, imaginary part. I can just say IV. So most persons actually say that f of z is equal u plus IV. Now why is it like this? My u, what is my u defined by? u is defined by x and y, right? Because my u is equal to s squared minus y squared. So it means I have my u having x and y. Then plus i um, v, what is my v defined by? It is defined by also x and what? y. What are you noticing here? We have four four real guys we have our u we have our v and then we have x and y 
So how do we graph something like this? Because it is very easy to graph our y equal to f of x, real analysis. But complex analysis is much more um, difficult. So what do we do? So what we're going to do here? We're going to say, well, um, z is equal x plus i y. Beautiful. So this is our z. But our f of z, when we then transform it, when we then transform it, our f of z is equal to u plus i v, where u and v are both defined by x y. Okay. So it means if I can, in a way, I can actually graph this because I just have my x and y. I can graph this. But can I also graph this individually? Yes. So it means I'm going to be having two graphs. Then I'm going to map one of them onto the other. Now look at this. Look at this. So let me say I have my z. Um, I want to kind of draw this. So let me call this my z plane. Let me call this my z plane, for example. Remember, this is your x axis, this is your y axis. Let me just call this guy a point here, a point here. And then let me draw um, my w plane. So this plane is going to be showing me um, my, you know, my complex guy. So um, I'm going to call this u and I'm going to call this v. So because my w plane is defined by what? u and what? v. Please remember that these are just variables we choose to name our results so for the z plane we name it x and y for the w plane it's u and v okay so we then have um, let me say something like this also here now if i have my um z plane because i can't draw these two graphs together why can't i draw them in one graph in one graph rather not graphs in one graph look at this this guy you have here we actually have four guys right because my u is going to be having a particular number. You know, if x and y are numbers, if x and y are numbers, that means everything here is going to be giving me u from what I just said. Everything is going to be giving me what? u. That's the meaning. So it means u is actually a number. Then v in itself is also a number because if x and y are numbers and I evaluate this, it means my v is going to also be a number. So it means u is a number v is a number then my x and y from the original definition of complex numbers are also numbers now imagine plotting these four guys inside one graph it's not possible because we need four perpendicular lines and the last time i checked we can only have two perpendicular lines which are our normal graphs we've been drawing right from secondary school so what we do is what i'm just showing you we actually um draw our z plane that is to say a complex number the z itself we're going to plot that very graph get the point on that very guy so we'll call it p remember it can be called anything so we'll call it p and then when we're done with evaluating that is to say f of z is equal to z square right we then put the value of z into this very function z squared we get our result remember our result is also going to be a number we then take this very number and plot it into our w plane. What we then get is what we call the p prime. Now, what is this p prime called? It is called the image of p. It is called the image of p. So, what do we then do? We are then going to map this guy onto this very guy. So, we've mapped this to this. And this is how we plot our graph. This is how we plot graphs of complex functions. We have to draw two separate graphs. One of them for Z plane, one of them for our W plane. So this is how we do this very guy. Please take note, what did I say? I said that P prime is the image of what? Of P. So in case you are asked to find the image of P, this is what we do. Or we can easily say when we transform this to this, we can call our W the transformation equation. So in case you are asked what W equal F of Z means, it is called what? The transformation equation. Now please take note. The position of P prime, the position of our image, depends on what Z is in the first place. And then our transformation what equation depends on two things. What our Z is and then the transformation equation. This will be all for this very video. The next video is going to treat a real problem on how we can actually find the image of a complex function. Or rather, how we can transform our Z plane to so, our W plane.
Thank you very much for watching this very video. See you in the next video.